Doesn't it feel nice and warm and cozy? I think it's time to bring some of our scrapbooking tips and ideas into our home decor projects with this bread idea, nightlight lampshades. Now let me show you how this project gets started. We're going to begin with this little lampshade from Club Scraps Nightlight Kit. And first of all, what we want to do is move the lighting unit from the back and it just clips right off. It's got this nice little on off switch so you can turn it off during the day. And then the front of the shade is already covered with adhesive and a protective coating. I'm just going to peel this away and now the adhesive of the shade is completely exposed. And I'm going to set that aside as well because we want to be working just with this template so we can make our plans for how we want to decorate the shade. Well, I wanted to commemorate my trip to the Netherlands with a photograph on my nightlight. This is a photograph taken of a maze garden. I'm standing on the rooftop of a castle and I decided to use a close-up version of that same maze garden which I just think is absolutely incredible. Every time I turn on this nightlight I'll remember my trip. Now this photograph is completely opaque so when I turn on the nightlight I won't be able to see through the photograph and I need to make it completely transparent. To do that I'm going to show you a little fun technique. Now, I went to the copy shop and I had a color copy made of this photograph and I'll be honest with you if you try this technique with an inkjet printer, it will not work. So do not try that at home. <laughs> I did. <laughs> All right, now what I'm peeling away here from this sheet is a piece of laminate. And I'm simply going to lay this piece right on top of that photograph. It's still not transparent. We got a couple more steps. I'm going to take a bone folder. You can also use a popsicle stick or the back of a spoon. And I'm going to burnish this photograph onto the laminate firmly. Now my picture is almost ready to go, but I want to size it so that it's going to fit onto the lampshade. Now this template is really helpful because if I were to just cut this picture in a straight line, it won't look all that great on my lampshade. I need to compensate for the fact that it's more narrow at the top and wider along the bottom edge. So we're going to do a little trick with this grid ruler with the zero center. And I'm going to find the approximate center of my lampshade here by looking at the measurements and matching them up on each side. Once I find my zero center, I'm just going to mark it with a pencil. So now that I have my center mark, I don't need to do any other measuring, which I love. I'm going to simply fold this template edge to that center pencil mark, making sure that I keep the alignment on the bottom and top edge. Okay, then I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. All right, now these are both folded into the center and we have this nice little trapezoid shape here. But notice that the shiny side is on the outside. I'm going to fix that and reverse these folds so that the smooth side is once again facing out. Now I'm going to trace this shape onto the back of my photograph that already has the laminate paper on it. And I need to hold that template in place. For that I'm going to use these removable glue dots. This is the perfect dot for the job because I want to be able to safely remove this again, but I really need to hold it in place. I'm just going to take one dot and removing it from the backing, and now with my dot in place, I can just lay it right on top of the photograph and it's not going to move while I trace around the pattern. Okay, well now that I have my pattern in place, I can safely and easily remove the dot from the photograph. And I've got a little trimming technique I want to show you. I have a straight edge here so I can make quick work of trimming away the photo that I'm not going to use on the shade. And now that I have those straight line cuts, I'm going to come back with the scissors and go ahead and cut along the other trace lines. All right, now here's my photo. This is the size that it needs to be. And when I test it, it's going to fit perfectly in the center of my shade, but it's still not transparent. So let me take it over to my bucket of water. And I'm just going to let it soak there for a second or two. And the water temperature doesn't matter. And you can even do this under a faucet of running water, but in time, the backing of the color copy will begin to soften and you'll just be able to wipe it away with your thumbs rubbing carefully. And meanwhile, the actual image of the photograph will transfer onto the laminate and then you'll have your transparent photo. And you can start to see that happening already, but to save a little bit of time, I've gone ahead and prepared the entire transfer ahead of time.
Okay, so there is our photograph and it will be transparent. Now there's the issue of these other two side pieces that still need to be embellished. Now for the outside of this lampshade, I'm using this piece of paper that has a printed design already on it because I thought it would make a nice decorative element on the shade. To get the appropriate size, all you need to do is turn everything over, line up that fold line to the edge of your paper, trace, straight line cut, and then scissor cut on the curved lines, and then you'll have the pieces in the appropriate size like I've already done for you here. Okay, now every designer loves to have a little bit of forgiveness in their design. So I've created just some quarter inch paper ribbons to cover the seams between the paper and the transparent photograph. So then those will be put into place on the shade when we assemble. So let's go ahead and do that. Here's my lampshade again with all the adhesive exposed. So you just wanna be careful. And I'm going to begin on the left side of the shade with that element that I cut earlier and just burnish it into place. Next, I'll take my photo transparency and line it up on the edge of the printed paper and once again burnish it onto the shade and I assure you when we turn this night light on it will look fabulous. Finally one last piece should fit in into the remaining open space. So I've really taken care of a lot of the trial and error part. Now you'll be able to get it right the first time. Okay, now what about these little paper ribbons? I need to find a way to attach them to the shade and the solution for that is the glue dots continuous line. I love these because the backing on the line of glue is perfectly clear and I don't have to sit around and wait for any glue to dry. Now, if I just pull away the line from the backing, you can see the glue line is right there. I'm just going to place it carefully on the seam between the printed paper and the photograph. Then I'll just take my scissors and now that I know the appropriate length, I'll just make a little snip. The next thing, and this is an important step, you need to make sure that you burnish the glue line into place over the seam so that it bonds well with the paper. And then you can carefully lift the backing away and my glue is exposed and ready to adhere. So I'll come back with my paper ribbon and stick it into place. That's all there is to it. Now I'll do the other side. Well, this is really taking shape, but I do think it would be nice if we had maybe a row of beaded trim or something along the bottom edge. And another great way to apply that beaded trim would be with a piece of this continuous glue line as well. I'm just gonna start it on the back side of the shade, burnish a little bit there. And because I'm doing this on a round surface, I'm just gonna be bringing it around in maybe half inch increments and just pressing it into place as I go around the edge. Now once I reach the end of the shade, I'll take a scissors and just leave a little bit of an end and I'll wrap that around to the back. And then go back and burnish it to make sure it really is bonding well with the lampshade. And then peel off the backing. Okay, we're ready to apply the beaded trim. I'm just going to start on the back here and then very carefully, because this glue is going to adhere to whatever comes in contact with it, and press down in those same half inch increments the beads of the trim into place. When I reach the back, I'll just wrap the tail end around and cut off any excess. Now at this point, I'd really like to add maybe one more trim element, and I have this gold rickrack that I think will make a perfect finishing touch for the bottom edge of our shade. This time I'm going to employ the use of another dot adhesive. This is the mini dot. And this works really well because the rickrack is a little bit more transparent and I don't want a full load of glue in those areas. Spaced about every half inch, burnishing as I go, I'll just apply the glue dots along the ribbon's edge. Now I'm ready to place that rickrack. Again, I'm going to start on the inside of the shade and every spot where there's a dot, I'll just press a little bit and you can see how well hidden the glue will be behind the rickrack and it's there to stay. Turn the corner you'll want to trim the edge away. Now what you might want to consider doing is adding another border to the top edge of your lampshade. Now remember, light is gonna be emanating from the back side of the shade, and because I already have this pre-printed design right here, I thought it might be fun to add a little extra special touch. I have a paper piercing tool that I'm using, and I'm just gonna support the shade from the back side with my fingers, being really careful not to poke my fingers as I go. And I'm just gonna pierce along the printed line and then into the top point of each flower petal that's printed on the paper. And when I plug this nightlight in, it's really gonna give it a fantastic look. Now I thought one more little element would be a nice finishing touch, possibly a little metal embellishment right on the front of the lampshade. Now to attach that, I'm going to use Glue Dot's Craft Dot. And these are nice just because they have a nice half inch diameter and they're really gonna help keep this part 
metal piece in place. So now my craft hat has been transferred to the back of the piece and then I'll just apply it to the shade. And again, I don't have to wait for it to dry. It's ready to go. And now that I've shown you this bright idea, let's dim the lights and take a look at a few more of these other beautiful lampshades. Well, it's all cozy over here again, and here's our beautiful lampshade with that gorgeous transparent photo in there. And remember, now I have the trim across the top, and you can see how fabulous those pierced holes really add a great look to this shade. And then moving on down here, I'll show you how I incorporated some index photos. I turned them into transparencies just like I did previously, and added some fun trim and other embellishments to the front of the shade. Here's another one. It's a little bit more simple, maybe a little bit less time, but it still incorporates that transparent photo along with some stamped edges on the outer rim of the shade. And then here, this one, we just didn't even have any photos to attach, but we did sort of some of the same elements with piercing the shade to allow the light to come through. And then finally, here's one that's beautiful and it's just all stamped elements with the same type of trim involved attached in the same way. Well, now I've shared all my bright ideas with you. All you need to do is download the design guide and give it a try. I'll see you next time. For step-by-step -step instructions on how to create this week's project, download the design guide featuring special make-it-your-own bonus tips.